Ted Rubin. Hey, man. What? Episode number 47 of the Top 5 Scope, and I've got my buddy Ted Rubin in the house. Excited to be here, man. i got to tell you, this new Joel, it says on his door, no solicitation, so I couldn't solicit him like you. So I'm behaving myself. I'm not telling Joel what I want to do for him, but then again, I don't think I ever did. So today, no, you're, you're, you're cool, man. I'm glad you're here. And we're going to do top five tips for explosive return on relationship. Because you know my buddy Ted's hashtag is R O N R. R O N R. And don't forget that beyond that, and the next step is that there's no let up. Hashtag no let up, baby. And there it is. There it is. No let up. Don't let up. Don't ever let up. So yeah. Ted is just uh, the consummate pro when it comes to relationship. He's all about people. He's all about those That's it, right? Yes, yes, you got it there. Hashtag. That's my man, Jason Trump. All right, all right. And Jason, listen, I got to apologize, man. I sent you an all right, all right bracelet. It came back because it didn't have enough ridiculous. It didn't have enough It was a return postage. on postage. It was a return on postage for 22 cents, <laughs> which, by the way, I've never had that happen with one of these. And I wasn't feeling well, so I didn't get it back out to you this week. But it will go out as soon as I get back home. There you go. And that's a promise from my man, Ted Rubin. He's a man of his word. So we're going to get started here in the top five. And while we do, <laughs> no, I got my notes here. Because in episode number four of top, size scope, top Five Scope, I said top five reasons to make notes. So you know what it is you're going to talk about. Yes. And don't get left, you know, going, wait, where was I? What was I supposed to talk I about? I don't even remember. I mean, that's the whole reason I have slides when I do a presentation. There's nothing on them. Reminder. It's reminders, sir. Yeah, that's what it is. It's, it's a trigger, so you know what. And good shit for other pe for people in the audience to tweet out. What he yeah. said. Yeah. So you guys can keep sharing as we're talking, but let's get Be started. Be good to people, baby. That's right. It's simple. Number one expl tip for explosive return on a relationship is... Listen. What? Uh, just listen. Oh, okay. excuse me? What? I'm listening. Because, you know, most people, you think you're listening, and you're not paying attention at all. I mean, let's think about it. Half the stuff I probably said to Joel while I was here earlier, he doesn't have a clue what, what I said, because he was just kind of looking at me and staring, but seriously. You know, it's about really, I call it not just listening, but hearing. Okay, now I had an argument with my publisher about that, because they said, no, it's not just hear, but listen. But I think people have gotten used to the generic, just, you got to listen. And then they don't. One of the reasons I think salesmen become such great marketers, I think some of the best marketers out there are former great salespeople. Because any good salesperson learns how to listen first. And that's what you got to do. And these days, there's no excuse not to. There's so much material out there that if you're not paying attention to your audience, if you're not out there listening to what they're saying, if you're not doing your research, if you're not simply just Googling someone before you meet with them or going to LinkedIn, then you're not doing your job and you're not going to... Let them know that you care about who they are. That's right. You know, when you meet somebody at a networking event for the first time and you ask them, so what do you do? And then you don't listen. You gotta... Or you ask them their name. Right. And two seconds later, they, they, they come over and they say, oh, can you introduce me to this guy? And you go, like, uh, uh, because you're not listening. You're moving on. What you're doing is you're moving on to the next thing instead of paying attention to what's happening now. And that's so bad for building relationships. If you want to build relationships, you pay attention to people. You listen to them. You repeat back things they've said to you, and then they think, wow, like, this guy's really listening to me. I heard what he said. He said I should listen. Right? Imagine, imagine women if your husbands actually listened. Oh, freaking remarkable. I mean, if one time, if one time the dude would just take out the garbage when you asked him to, <laughs> instead of just nodding his head and let it sit in there, can you imagine this would be a revolutionary thing in marriages across the world? But it doesn't happen. It's really hard to do in your personal relationships. But in your business relationships, in your friendship relationships, or out of the romantic kind, it's a must. I want you to and by the way, if you do do it with, with in, in your romantic relationships, pff, amazing. I know, it's, about it. I know it's almost impossible, but if you do, it's groundbreaking. I want you to know, Ted, I heard exactly what you said. I wonder if that's still broadcast in their media. I hope it is. It looks like it kind of locked up. So number one is listen number two it's not about you no it's about them make it about them not me 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 i just got here joel this is where i was i don't feel good i went here i'm going from here to san jose and then i'm going to say so how about joel what's up in your life man i love your new glasses tell me about them I mean, and then, John, John Barbara, and then jump back to number one. Did you listen? What did I say? And listen about John Barbara's. Boom. Oh, boom. I mean, that's what it's about. Make it about them, and then listen when you make it about them. I 
I like it. I like it a lot. You know, I'm noticing here uh, on this other app I'm using, it starts dimming even though we're still broadcasting. Yeah. That's a problem. Oh, really? That's interesting. It should stay live. So, number two, it's all about them, the person you're trying to build a relationship with. Numero toi. Little French for you. When was the last time you walked into a retailer or a store or anybody providing a service and, and they said to you, how can I serve you? And this used to be standard practice. Right. But how about doing that with all your relationships? What can I do to help you? I got a buddy, ex-business partner, probably a future business partner, John Andrews. Okay? Love the guy. John does it every morning. Is when he's driving to work. And he's got a list of phone numbers. Different every day. And he calls up people. And the first word I know when I see his name come up, I know when I pick up the phone, the first words out of his mouth after he says, hey, buddy, or hey, dude, he's going to say, what can I do to help you? What can I do to serve you? How can I make your life better? How can I do something that will add value to your life? I tell this to brands all the time. Stop worrying about content being perfect and contextual. Make it valuable. Make it something that helps people. Here, here's a, So do you know David Hancock? <laughs> my buddy David Hancock at Morgan James Publishing. Uh, I don't think I do. i got to introduce you at some point. Be uh, I've done six books with him. Uh, great publishing house. And when, books. when you call David, he answers the phone and he says to everybody, this is David. I can help you. He just tells you right up front. I can help I you. I love it, that. Isn't it awesome? I can help you, and I love it. So but now when I call him, I say before he gets a word, I say, "This is Joel. You can help me." So it doesn't have to be the words. How can I? How can I serve you? But it can be that being a part of your brand. That right. being people knowing that when they need a connection, when they need someone to help them network, when they need a new job, when they need to understand whether what they're doing is working, when they want a valuable opinion or somebody that's going to speak straight with them, that you're someone that's going to be there to help them. If you're there to serve people, they are going to get back. I like to say, do for others without expectation of anything back directly in return. It's an attitude of service, right? right. It is, but it, what it is is that, you know, I, when I first started saying that, a bunch of years ago, I was very involved in the blogging community, specifically the mom blogging community, and three or four mom bloggers came after me big time, and they said, well, that's not return on relationship if you don't want anything in return. And I said, but it is, because return on relationship means on your relationship in general. It means from really your whole global world. And people, look, your brand as a person is what you do, as a business or a person, your brand is what you do, a reputation is what people remember and share. And when you build a reputation as somebody that does for others, other people are going to do for you. It's really that simple. Number three, how can I serve you? Number four in our top five tips for explosive return on a relationship. What is it, Ted? Well, I think it's something to do with engagement. Aim for ongoing engagement. How many people do you deal with in social? See, we're engaging. No, but, but we're engaging and we're continually engaging. That's right. How many times do you see people ask a question on Twitter, especially brands are really guilty of this. You know, they ask a question and then they just walk away. Right. But I have an answer for you. Come and then you answer and you never hear back. Or how many people in general, I, mean, I can't believe, I have people that will reach out to me and I will get an emergency message. It'll be a text, it'll be a tweet. Ted, I really need to talk to you. It's really important. Can you help me? And I jump right back in. I go, great, what can I do for you? And then I never hear back. Or like two days later, they come back and they go, so I wanted to discuss, I'm like, who are you and what was that about? What like, was the point of the initial outreach Right. What there was, was no follow-up? And, and this happens all the time. You start conversations and you walk away from them. You get involved in something back and forth, and sure, look, we're all busy with other things, but you have to let people know that you will come back to it. Or I tell people all the time, if I don't get back to you about something, or if I don't follow up, please remind me, because it means that I overlooked it, not, but I don't want to do that. And I'm actually more upset if you come back to me a month later and say, you know, you never got back to me. And I'm like, oh, my God, well, why didn't you remind me? So, you know, it's really important, especially when you're looking for something from others, when you're trying to engage them, when you're reaching out to them, follow up. Answer their questions. If you ask a question and they reply to you, respond back. It's simple. It's not rocket science. It is, this is not, look, I hear this all the time. This return on relationship stuff, this is not new. This is not rocket science. Well, guess what? It's not. But... Here's the problem, okay? Most people just aren't doing it. They're really not. You know, it, it, it's so easy to say that this is easy stuff to understand, and this is common sense, but guess what? What's not so common? Sense. Thank yeah. You. If, you just, if you aim for the baseline, you're going to be above what most people do is the point. Uh, it, you go above the baseline, and you're going to stand out. So number four, aim for ongoing engagement. And finally, number five, 
is really about you because you're the audience. How many brands, how many people, how many of you don't even know who your audience is? Don't even know who follows you? Don't even know what the makeup of it is? Don't, don't even bother going to see what they're doing. So I talk to brands all the time. I Look, I speak in front of audiences, okay? It can be anywhere from 50 brand marketers to 5,000. And I always ask this question, who in this audience, either themselves or somebody on their team, goes to the Twitter feeds or the Facebook pages of the people that like them or their brand or follow them? And go see what they're doing there. All you're worried about is who's coming to your page, who's retweeting your tweets, who's looking at what you're writing, instead of simply going to the things. Like whenever I speak, I put up a, a slide of a fly on a wall. And I ask people, do you know what this is? It's the proverbial fly on the wall. I wish it could be a fly on a wall in that meeting, right? Everybody says they want that. Well, guess what? Every consumer out there is inviting you into the living room and you're not going. It's all out there, all the information you want. Start going to their pages. Start making everybody in your company responsible every day to go to a few pages of people that are involved, that are in your demographic, that follow you, and see what they're talking about. It's all out there for the taking. Perfect. Know who they are because if you're not, if you don't know who they are, you're throwing every marketing dollar out the door. It's there's if we could see the amount of waste. Oh. In social, of uh, them attempting to put them, I say them, brands that put themselves out there and don't follow these basic precepts. It's unbelievable. It, whoosh. And, and the waste of just individuals. Or, you know, I, I can't tell you how many, I know guys that do email marketing for their own, for their own small business for themselves, and they don't even follow up. They get people that reach out and say, I'm interested in that, and they don't even call them back. I mean, and then they complain they don't get enough business. It's really not that complicated. Communicate with people, listen to them, ask how you can help make it about them, follow up, know who they are, rinse and repeat. Boom. And our friends from Archon Mounts, Aaron, that I told you is making me that super yes. cool mount that see I here? believe is on the way. Yeah, he just popped awesome. in here. And I can't wait to see that mount right now. I've got a jerry rigged with two devices. I'm using your tripod right now for the iPhone, for the Mivi, and the iPad is just in its stand. So can't wait to see it. There you go. Top five tips for explosive return on relationship from my buddy, Ted Rubin. TedRubin.com. At Ted Rubin, all places. No let up, baby. No let up. No Hashtag let up, Ted Rubin. Thanks a lot for joining us today, guys. Really appreciate it. And Teddy, be good to people. Be good to the peoples. Teddy and I are going to hang out for a while. Then we've got a dinner we're going to go to. Probably do some Snapchatting. Follow I think at, we will. at Ted Rubin on Snapchat. You guys know where to find me. And at Ted Rubin on Snapchat. Boom, like that. And until next time, do that good stuff. Say down Periscope. Down Periscope. Boom, there it goes.